she was a lovely woman. She was very generous and kind-hearted. I, I, I couldn't understand why anyone would want to hurt her. In the early hours of Sunday, the 25th of August, 1991, Vera Anderson was found murdered. Her body was discovered in her car in the Penketh area of Warrington. Cheshire Constabulary launched a massive investigation, turning to Crime Watch for help. Well, as to our final reconstruction, did you know Vera Anderson? Vera had many friends, but certainly no enemies as far as anyone knows. The main focus of the investigation was to try and establish Vera Anderson's movements once she'd left her home address. The Crime Watch reconstruction showed the places Vera may have visited. There was some information, a possible sighting of her at the Crown and Cushing pub, and there was a whole load of inquiries done around the Crown and Cushing and, and a possible sighting of Vera Anderson with a man in the pub on that evening. Unfortunately, as a result of extensive inquiries, the identity of that male came to nothing. More than 30 years later, the identity of Vera's killer remains a mystery. Now retired, former Detective Sergeant Gary Massey has returned to the case as a civilian investigator. My interest in this case has built over the seven or eight years that I have been reviewing it and I have invested a lot of time in trying to identify who was responsible and bring justice for the family of Vera Anderson. Vera's whereabouts the day she was killed are still unknown. Vera Anderson received a phone call sometime before 10 p.m. on Saturday the 24th of August 1991. Following that phone call, it prompted her to leave her home address. She left her young son with a next door neighbor. We have Neil for 10 minutes. Emptied the contents of the boot of her car, which was a blue Ford Cortina, and drove away from her home address. At quarter past three the following morning, Vera Anderson's body was found in a car at an old disused tannery site in the Penketh area of Warrington. Requesting supervision, found her body in a vehicle. More than 30 years ago, the site where Vera's body was found looked much different than it does today. In 1991, to my right, was an enormous industrial tannery complex. That's now been demolished and a housing estate exists. Vera's daughter, Lorraine, was 19 at the time and still vividly remembers the day she lost her mum. Got woke up on the Sunday morning by two CIDs standing at the door. It was very difficult. I just felt so alone, to be honest. And I thought, what am I going to do? But I just got on with it. No choice. I was more upset about my brother really losing my mum because he was only seven and um, he, he did, he idolised my mother. We had to sit him down and tell him that his mummy was never coming back and that was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Lorraine still lives in the area and now has a family of her own. It's still very difficult obviously because the killer hasn't been caught. It's just really not got any easier. I've, got, I've learned to live with it now, but I haven't forgot about it in any way. Gary believes there's still hope of finding the killer, and one lead in particular has kept his attention. A member of the public who resided to the rear of the site believes he saw Vera Anderson's car on the tannery site around about 11 p.m. At approximately 11.15 p.m. on the night of Vera Anderson's murder, a witness was travelling along Tannery Lane when a car emerged from the service road, the service road where Vera Anderson's body was later found. The car is described as a brown hatchback-type vehicle. 
Police still want to trace the driver of the brown car. And for Lorraine and her family, getting answers are as important now as they ever were. It's a long time to hold on to something for so long. I just don't understand how anyone could do such a thing. It's never going to be forgotten. I'm still going to have it on my mind until the killer's caught. I don't think I'm going to be able to rest. I feel like it's me living the life sentence.